Hit the brakes! Brakes! Oh, oh that suspension's so rough. Oh. What? It's called movie magic, all right? That's right, we're back into Backyard Mechanic on the 60 build, and today we're looking at installing leaf spring suspension. Those leaf springs are as flat as pancakes. And it's all gonna be done on the shed floor with minimal tools and no hoist. I've never done leaf sprung suspension without a hoist before. It's heavy, I'm expecting difficulty. But along for the ride, we've of course got Jake. He's uh, the guy that owns the 60 and he's gonna hold bolts and stuff. And Rhiannon, who had a skin full of uh, apple teenies last night. And might not do too much, but maybe supervise from the chair, but also help a little bit. Jake, what's the first thing we do for a suspension job? Have a beer. Yeah, actually, I wasn't going to say that, but let's get a beer. <laughs> yeah, let's get a beer, right? <laughs> what we're actually going to do as well, though, is um, measure the height uh, from the bottom of the rim to here. So as we can see our before and after measurements and see how much we get out of it. Seven hundred six eighty. What should we do now? Uh, the way I see it, you've got two options. You can have a go at doing it with the wheels on, and you can have a go at doing it with the wheels off. Oh, uh, wheels off. Just gonna um, state that some people choose to do it with the wheels on. Our ancestors fought so we could have choices, and here we are making choices. Have two mechanics creepers, must race. Oh, okay. Ready, set, set, go. Crash into the Get the dog. <laughs> Jake. So before we go any further, as you just saw from the Mechanics Creeper race, uh, we're in no way professionals. And look, you're probably going to see some things here that might not be the safest option. That's the nature of working in your backyard. So have a cry about it or don't. Um, that out of the way, my mechanical advisor has told me that we need to jack this thing up and get the chassis on the axle stands. So they're not going under the axle. We jack it up. We get it sitting on the chassis so that the axle's all hanging free. I'm going to loosen the nut. <laughs> the wheels are off. Where to now, boss? So now you want to... Take the jack and push it underneath the axle. Jack it up a bit to take some of the weight and then remove the shock absorbers. You know, for something with this kind of girth, it just shouldn't be that soft. So right here we've got a lesson in check your bloody parts. Yeah. We've got um, some orders that have been stuffed up. We've only got one set of U-bolts for the front. You're supposed to replace the U-bolts when you do a set of springs. We've only got set for one spring and we have um, no spring mounting bushes anywhere inside. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass given like how long things are taking at the moment. Mm. We're yeah, suffering from like a couple of weeks for things to come. So Chris is gonna sit here for a few weeks on axle stands, hey. Yeah. Check your parts. So it's about three weeks later. Uh, when I left you last, we were talking about getting in the parts that we're missing. Big old bag of bushes here. We'll talk more about what we've chosen as we go. And this, the U-bolts we were missing over there as well. Uh, we'll leave off where we, start off where we left and whatnot, which was, um, I just loosened up the bolts on the bottom of the, uh, the nuts. Get the mind going, get the mind going. Loosened off the nuts on the bottom of the U-bolts underneath the spring. So I've got to do the same for the other side. And then 
Up in the back here, we're going to loosen off the uh, points where the spring connects to the chassis. Two bolts loose at the back and one at the front. All the nuts on the bottom of the U-bolts are loose, so it's now time to get the springs out, Jake. So we're in a situation where the diff might Yeah, fall over. Ah, uh, so we do it one at a time. No, well that's where I was going with this. If you've seen my GU patrol replacing suspension, um, coil springs, it was a coil spring vehicle, it's got You've got um, your stabiliser. Uh, yeah, your... it's got upper and lower control arms and everything there keeps your uh, your diff in place. In a leaf spring vehicle... <laughs> the spring holds the diff. The spring <laughs> does all of it, so that locates the thing. You just um, go and undo those bolts and that whole assembly is going to hit the floor. So, what we're going to do here, we've got the body on axle stands. That's held in place. We're going to get, because we've got two trolley jacks, we're going to use them both. One on each end of the axle and just jack it up to take that weight and then we can remove all those nuts and bolts and drop the spring. Um, we don't have to bother about disconnecting the sway bars in this instance uh, because we don't need to get any more droop to fit the spring back in. If anything, we're actually going to have to jack that diff up a little bit to fit the new uh, springs. Speed this bit up, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna take the shackle off yeah. uh, and I'm gonna. You'll probably have to take some of the weight up on this. Yeah. Um, I might just jack it up a little. So, for those of you watching at home, I just left the nuts on for a moment so as I could uh, make sure the pins were nice and loose. I push them through just to protect the threads while I use the big hammer. Alright, we should be able to swing the spring now. Swing! So down the back there we've disconnected the spring at the rear and it's hanging down. But we still connected it at the front. I've still got the nut on the back of that, so I'll take that off. And then there's this little 12mm bolt here. And then with a hammer, this will drive all the way out and I'll just have someone support the bottom of the spring and then the whole spring will be free. And here is one big hefty leaf spring removed. I really don't like doing leaf springs. But that's one out, I'm going to go to the other side and do it exactly the same. You don't need to see the same thing twice, do you? Nah. We'll see you in a moment, we'll get that out, we'll talk about the new stuff that's going in. Some of these old, uh, what do you call these things, bush pins? I don't know. Yeah, let's just call it pins. Yeah, pins. Uh, they're very rusty and there's a bit of old rubber on them, so we're going to clean them up. Ready for the new rubbers. Just a wire wheel, do fine. Now that we've cleaned all the excess off, we're just putting some rust converter on it. Keep it nice. We got old springs versus new springs here. The only bit that we're probably going to swap over is this rubber insulating pad. Still seems to be in okay condition. Just whack that on the bottom. Uh, the springs we're using are Dobinson's leaf springs. Oh, she heavy. HJ61 7L. Uh, that's the part number. Then it's got an R here for rear and RH for right hand. So you don't even have to uh, measure the things up to know which one's what. That's pretty handy. We have chosen Dobinson's gear uh, just because it's readily available. Uh, it's generally a pretty good price and it's Australian. Is it Australian made, Jake? 
Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Australian made Dobbins on the gear. Um, so that's why we've chosen that. This is two inch lift and yeah, we've probably got about a one inch actual height difference. Jake's painted up some parts. Now we've got to shoot down the road and get some rubber grease. Put in the bushes. Got ourselves some red rubber grease. This is Penrite, which is awesome, but that's just what was on the shelf. Uh, smear a bit around your rubber, then straighten the hole. I suppose it's red so you can tell that it's... Not blue. Not, yeah, normal grease. So if you think just using normal grease is okay, you'll be doing this again in a thousand Ks. There's six per side of the vehicle, six bushes. We are hashtag reduce, reusing, recycling the old uh, shackles and just putting a bit of rubber grease on the pins. Work it in. Uh, the, shackle, uh, the rubber is going to rub around that bit there, so make sure you get a bit of, bit of grease around there. Uh, we've also forgot to mention that we got new pins for the front of the spring, so Jake wasted his time cleaning up the old ones, mm. so we forgot we had new ones. So and there's they're that. They're greasable, so that's cool. Yeah, they got a little grease nipple to go in the end. Um, we've got the new spring here. When you're taking your old springs off, it's worth paying attention to which end is which, which I did. Um, so they're a little bit different. This one's just got a sort of a flat bit, and that came off the front. So that's our front. Um, now we've got to get it back in position. So front end first, you could probably do it one person, um, but there's two of us. So you can hold this up in place while I jiggle the pin in. Hey. I'm about to poop about doing this. <laughs> How was that for you, love? Oh, I hurt. I could just picture all the um, all the heavy diesel mechanics that work far far up north going, "Oh, look at these two little bitches." Yeah. Now both of the springs are in. We have to locate the axle on the spring properly. Uh, now the way you do that is in the middle of your leaf spring you'll see a little bit poking up the end of the bolt or something like that or it might even actually be a special locating pin and then on the bottom of the axle here there's a flat plate with a hole in it and you've just got to slide the axle back and forth until that pin drops into the locating hole so you'll know when it happens because you'll feel it go thump so we're going to let down our jacks and that will drop the axle down onto the spring and then just slowly shuffle it around till we find the right spot. So rotate the diff slightly counterclockwise. Alright, that should That's go. It. There we go. Oh, there she is. She's on. So make sure you note which way these comes off because it can be a bit confusing by the time you get them back on if you've had to wait a couple of weeks for the parts. Reusing the old rubber cushion there and then the bolt at the bottom just clears that hole. Just make sure your shock mounting pin is in the same place. And we have also got ourselves some nice shiny new U-bolts because these do stretch and they should be replaced. Just a bit of removable thread locker keeps everything sweet and you can remove it if you have to. What an amazing crotch shot this is. Yeah? Yeah. Bit of crotch, bit of suspension. Treaty, yeah, treaty now, treaty, yeah, treaty now. Come on, Bobby, let's go, party. So we do up those U-bolts by hand, and the same for the spring hangers and everything else. We leave it all loose, except for the U-bolts. We tighten those things like you wouldn't believe. You just tighten it until that rattle gun stops. So tight. There's probably a torque specification and... Uh, 
someone's probably got a better idea of how to do it, but in all the times I've done leaf springs, suspensions, and what everyone else has told me, so tight. So Jake's fitting the driver's side shock absorber. And again, we've got Dobinson's um, nitro gas twin tube shock absorber. So nothing fancy and over the top. Um, twin tube nitro gas are a pretty well proven rugged shock absorber, and especially for the money you pay. Um, solid, yellow, what more can I say? Just like the spring shackles, we're leaving the shock bolts loose until it's on the ground. Slip it in. Okay, every bolt is in place, the wheels are back on. It's time to drop it, Jack. Um, I'll get the jack at the back and you just remove that stand mm -hmm. and we'll see how high it sits. That's it. No, it's hashtag no sag. That shows how sags that stock suspension was. Yeah. I reckon we've gained four inches there. Yeah, well, that will settle a lot when we take it on its first drive. Mm. Looks as, given it the IFS look. Yeah, it looks, almost looks as bad as the 100 series IFS. It does, but we'll fix that. We're going to do the front now. And yes, I said IFS 100 series look bad. Rough. Uh, we won't show you as much detail on the front because it's going to be very similar to the rear. Where it differs, we will uh, make sure we document it. Otherwise, I'm going to open up that front door, get that camera on a time lapse, and rip into it. Mm. See if we can get this thing done out of the way by the end of today. Whoa, whoa! I forgot to mention, um, we left all those bolts loose at the back. The reason we're doing that is uh, because when you let it down, everything needs to settle out. So now I'll crawl under there and I'll crank everything up nice and tight. Almost forgot, and if we forgot to do it now, we would forget to do it before the test drive in a disaster. A couple of things to talk about in the front here. Um, another reason to change U-bolts. I talked about them stretching, because they're so damn tight, they get done up so tight. So stretching is one reason. Another reason is because um, the bottom of these U-bolts protrude so far down below the axle, they often get quite beaten up off-road and so um, the ends of these can often be sort of grated away or just the threads all smashed up. So you want to replace it if it looks like that. The other problem you're going to have of course if it's all beaten up is getting the nut off. You need serious braking light. At least a 3 metery. Not mucking around with no 2.8 meters. 3 meter breaker bar. Uh, shock absorbers for the front of the 60 series. Pretty scummy looking, but um, not nearly as loose as that one from the back. Different brand to the back as well. They were blue back there, yellow at the front. Yeah, the ones at the back were the originals. Were oh, were they? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, if you didn't hear that, Jake said that the ones on the back were original Toyota. Um, eye on the bottom, in on the top. Well, actually, that sounds pretty bad. Um, yeah, look, that's the first two things I have had to say about the front. From here on, it's very much like the back. We're going to get our two jacks under there, take the weight of the axle, and release the springs now. So this is why we must grease our bushes and if they're rubber bushes you must use the right grease else the bushing deteriorates and when that happens that's when moisture and salt can get in here 
We know this has done a bit of beach time in the past. We've got a lot of pitting on the inside. Hopefully you can see that. So these are pretty much done. Next time we change the bushes, we'll probably be changing these too. So what we're doing for now is getting them on the wire wheel, chipping away any loose rust, getting rid of all that rust, getting them nice and clean, ready for some new grease, and then the bushes will go on. Time to put these two springs in. We've greased up all the bushes and the shackles and everything ready. Um, that is the front end of the springs and this is the back end. And what I've done here, as learned from the back springs, is I've left one of the bushes out on the outside edge. And so we're going to put the back one in first, lift it up, and then slot the bush in from the side. Way easier. Um, the two front springs, they have exactly the same part number. I flipped them up this way so as I can see if one's higher than the other. And if there was a higher one, we would put it on the driver's side. Um, but now nah, there's not really enough difference there to matter. So things kind of went a little bit bollocky on the front here. And now it's dark. Um, okay, the problems we had, uh, where is it, the sway bar, Jake's removed it. The sway bar disconnects um, from up in here. We hadn't needed to disconnect the sway bar on the back, but on the front, uh, the diff was just hanging off the sway bar and wasn't even touching the spring. So we took that off and it came down to the right height. Uh, then we've taken the two jacks, we've moved them off the axle onto the springs because we needed to get a bit more rotation on it to get those pins to line up. So we jacked up on the springs, bringing the springs up to the axle this time, uh, but we still couldn't get the rotation. And then we discovered it was because of this disgusting little bash plate thing uh, sitting underneath the, the front drive shaft. And the axle and everything's dropped so low, that as we tried to roll it back, that tail shaft was hitting on the bash plate and it wouldn't swivel all the way. So that had to come out. And now finally, the pins have located in the holes on the bottom of the axle. And we're gonna put the U-bolts on and tighten it all up. shackles are straight up and down. <laughs> now we're going to have to get under there and tighten up the shock absorber, top and bottom, sway bars back in, um, do all the, um, the pins and the shackles up nice and tight. And then we can call it it for a day. Mm. That's how I feel. That was a long day. Tell you what guys, if you enjoy watching these backyard mechanic videos, I don't often plug Patreon, but man, give it a look, eh? Yeah, make him a sandwich. Yeah. Buy me a coffee! As I once had somebody say. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it helps. It takes twice as long. We've been going at this since 9 this morning, and it's about 8pm now. Um, it takes twice as long to film things. It's insane. Anyway, that's my little plug for Patreon done. Um, if you want to see how this goes, stick around. I'm going to use the magic of editing now and skip forward to us doing uh, the road test and measuring the heights to tell you how far it came up. Um, two reasons we're not doing it right now tonight. Actually, let's call it three. I'm tired, it's dark, and there's about half an engine in this thing. So. With the magic of editing, 
and some magical noises right here. Let's skip forward to the road test. It is now considerably later. We're talking five inches on the mullet. And the arm? Do you really want to know? So we'll take you for a test drive and tell you what we think. So I can tell you the first thing you notice is it's considerably higher than it was. Before we did the suspension it was it was sloppy, there was really nothing left of it. Uh, now it's very firm. Maybe a bit too firm. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Maybe we'll just give it some time, maybe load it right up and take it off-road and really bed in this suspension a little bit because it's bloody firm. You feel everything. But the good thing about that is it turns now. So all new ball joints, new steering connections in there and it actually turns, it goes around corners now instead of trying to go off into the bushes. So I really like that but you do feel every bump. Straight away I can tell but yeah, you do feel those more square edge-ish little bumps that you get on the road. But off-road, it really likes to flex. It's really nice. You can, it, it likes to go right down through its travel. So the shocks are really doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, it's maintaining better traction because we've got more to work with. New tyres help as well. Now we're on gravel, a bit of corrugation. You do notice those initial small jagged bumps a bit more, but it's much more controllable. The traction is great with these new tires. And you get a little bit more control through the corners because the shock absorbers are actually working now and it's not just resting on the springs. So I really like that. back and it's the bit you've been waiting for we're going to measure up that suspension and see how much it's been lifted but before we do click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up we don't go any further until you do if you don't like the video you can click the thumbs down button but make sure you do that twice just to show how much you dislike it all right Jake what's our measurements from the bottom of the rim was it from the bottom of the rim we have 760 was it before? 700, so 60 mil. Now this isn't a 60 mil lift, it's roughly a 40 mil lift, but that just shows how far down it, the, the original suspension was sagged. So 60 mil in the back. We've got here 750. What did you say it was? 680. 680, 750, what's that? 70, 70 mil in the front. So the front was even more sagged. That's quick maths. So look, quite a raised height. Uh, cool, go home.